Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, we head to Camelot, eternal home of King Arthur. Most people know about the legend of King Arthur, and the sword and the stone, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of, like, high fantasy memories of this story, but uh, there's a darker side, like many ancient tales, and uh, we'll explore that in our review today of Once and Future, a new look at uh, the future of King Arthur and Arthurian legend today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, Once and Future, number one and number two. Uh, this book is by Boom Comics. It is written by Kieran Gillen with art by Dan Mora. And uh, it, it, it tells us a story set in the modern day about the possible return of King Arthur. Right, and you know what? Instead of gabbing about it, let's head straight into ye old million dollar comic book cam. And uh, we'll take a look. I've got issue number one and two to talk about today. So uh, let's do so. Uh, our story begins uh, with an ancient lake being drained and finding, what would you expect to find in a lake? Oh, not a sword, as you might expect, but in this case, a scabbard. Turns out it's a magical scabbard uh, that... that can heal wounds and, and is being stolen by a group of white nationalists and their evil female uh, archaeologist leader, right? And so these guys have decided that uh, they want to bring back England, right? And they're going to use this. And this is how we begin our story once in future. I really love this because um, it brings in the sort of modern day uh, politics and looking at like sort of the rise of nationalism in Europe um, but then ties it to them you know wanting to be throwback right they want to throw back to the good old days well in this case they want to throw back to the really really old days of King Arthur but as we'll find out in the story turns out they don't even know their own history so uh, uh, let's check it out right so we get to meet Bridget McGuire and Bridget McGuire is uh, Britain's last remaining and oldest monster hunter it turns out and her grandson Duncan McGuire, and the charmingly befuddled rugby playing Brit, right? Uh, so uh, he's on a date here, which is really just a chance to sort of shoe in, shoehorn in a bunch of exposition and character points. We get to learn a little bit about Duncan and how he's taking care of his grandmother and how she's in an old folks home, but she's really feisty and now she's run away from the old folks home. So he has to sort of break the date. He finds Granny out in the woods or she calls him and he finds her and she's exploring an old cache of weapons right and she reveals her history as britain's uh monster hunter and she shows things like this automatic uh wood stake firing automatic weapon she's like i used to use that to hunt vampires and he's like what do you mean used to and she's like well there ain't, there ain't none no more right basically she she's the one that or one of the people that helped Olymp destroy all vampires in england Eh, cool. I like it. This character suffers a little bit from the like sassy grandma on a Harley syndrome. Like She's so capable. Uh, it's almost unbelievable at, at her age. But then again, she has all this history and experience and stuff. And we'll give it a pass for now. right? So quickly we run into our first truly supernatural thing for Duncan to see. right? So he, they get to meet a questing beast. And this is something straight out of actual mythology. Um, I've seen it in other Arthurian comics either. I don't know if it's specific to King Arthur or, or just st stuff set in that period. But anyway, it's a beast that appears to you when you're at the beginning of a quest. And we take up a lot of pages with our uh, w with kind of a pointless action scene of him sort of like fighting with the questing beast for a little while. A little bit of a filler. Finally, we get to the point where... Um, Granny has just decided he's coming along with her. She's taking him at gunpoint, holding him hostage. Uh, but basically says, you know, this is kind of so you have an excuse, so you can't say you couldn't do it. And that, you know, the fact that the questing beast was there means that, like, you've been chosen for a quest, Duncan. Sir Duncan? Maybe. Um, so anyway, we learn a little bit about about how uh, that the young archaeologist that we met earlier, the the, the white nationalist one has actually was some sort of protege to Bridget and uh, and that 
they are trying to fulfill a prophecy, right, of the return of King Arthur, who is prophesied to return in Britain's darkest hour. But as she points out, there's two possible kind of readings of that prophecy. Well, you know, he could return because it's Britain's darkest hour, or his return could be the cause of Britain's darkest hour. Okay, interesting take on it. And that's our cliffhanger ending. I like that, uh, the ending, and it made me want to read more. So luckily, I've got the number two right here, and we can head straight into it. Now, I felt like there was a little bit of padding in this issue, but we did need the time to sort of set up our characters and stuff. So let's see if number two can deliver. So uh, I issue number two takes us basically on their hunt um, to, to try and retrieve the scabbard or, or to stop the nationalists from, from doing their plan, which is to resurrect King Arthur. Well, they get there pretty quickly, uh, and, and sure enough, Zombie Arthur arises, right? And from the looks of things, he, he's looking fairly sinister, right? Pretty evil. And he rises, and he draws his sword, a sword. They call it a sword from a stone, but this is not Excalibur, apparently. But he has a sword. Uh, and then he rises and he says that uh, the, 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 the archaeologist tells him, oh, he must want to knight you. And so, but then the unexpected happens. This is where I started to go, okay, zombie Arthur. All right, he's a zombie king. And now we're going to get into like zombie comic. Okay. This was really cool. He, he took the guy's hand and slices it open and licks the blood. And basically says, tastes it and says, oh, this is Anglo-Saxon blood, right? Not British blood, Anglo-Saxon blood, and immediately chops the guy in half. So the idea here, right, is that Britain was invaded by the Anglo-Saxons, and, you know, eventually that's what sort of took over, and that's what's the royal uh, family today, I believe, is descended from Germans. But the true Brits were, like, descendants, I guess, from the Celtic people, perhaps? I, forgive me, I don't know my British history great, but certainly from those British Isles, right? And so the idea here is that these guys who think they're such pure blood Englanders, right? They want to take back England. You know, the, the true king who has returned is like, no, you're an outsider. I like that. Um, turns out they all are outsiders, except for except for our female archaeologist, who's sort of there to take... The, take the place as his Merlin. He says that, you know, their Merlin has not been found or we couldn't find him or something. Definitely that's something that we're going to see in the future, right? What's King Arthur without a good Merlin? Um, but he's taken those dead Anglo-Saxons and he's and he's uh, risen them from the dead and turned them into his knights. One of them whose name was Wayne, he rose as Sir Gawain, right? From, from the round table. And uh, they talk about how she's got a... Uh, a Galahad, right? A Sir Galahad. And I, I don't remember all my Arthurian legends, but I remember uh, him being a key player in all this. So um, it ends with a sort of, we're ready for a confrontation between Granny and Duncan and the evil knights. Now, I like this comic in general, right? I, I, I like the idea. I like the concept. Um, the execution is another thing. I thought the execution, you know, for concept, I can give it like an eight. I really liked it. Uh, I, I like the idea. I like the idea of people trying to restore the good old days that don't even in their own mind have a good idea of what the good old days were all about, like not knowing their own history. And that's really cool. I like tying it into current events and the sort of white nationalists. They make great villains in comics or TV or, 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 or on the nightly news, right? So um, whatever your politics, they're good villains. Um so I like that. The execution, some of the dialogue, and especially the pacing of the comic. This is one of my biggest problems with um, some comics writers, right? Comics are all about pacing, using the unit of the page and breaking it down into panels and creating a flow and a flow of story across multiple pages. This is reads like a book that is being written to be collected in trade paperbacks, which it undoubtedly is. I feel that is a, often a weakness as the writer sort of has these blocks. They're like, okay, we know we're going to have a six issue trade paperback and each issue is 28 pages. And I want to tell this story by the end of this trade paperback. So that forces them to take, take their chapters and make them fit into the single issues in a way that is not totally organic and doesn't always work for me. 
That being said, I'm being highly critical of a book that I enjoyed. It's been a while since I picked up a a, a, a non-Big 2 uh, book off the stands. I got this as a recommendation at my local comic shop, the Scruffy Nerd Herder in Eureka. Uh, one of the dudes hanging around there buying comics on Wednesday said, hey, this is really a, a cool spin on King Arthur and you might want to check it out. So I did. Um, and I liked it. I'm, I'm in. I'm going to pick up number three and I will review it from there. I don't know if I'm going to be in it long term unless they can really sort of pick up the pacing and deliver like a more substantial single issue experience. So, um, hey, speaking of experience, uh, thank you for making the experience of being a YouTube creator so much darn fun. All of the interaction I'm getting in my videos, people liking and subscribing and especially commenting, right? Especially uh, adding to the conversation and talking about comics is, that's why I started this thing and that's what keeps me going. So, hey, uh, thank you for liking and subscribing and commenting and all that good stuff. Uh, ring the little bell if you want notifications of future videos. But most of all, hey, just thank you for watching.